This is a tough video to start because uh, there are a lot of videos like this and a lot of them are bullshit. So when you see my video and my title, you go, oh, he's going to say the same stuff that everyone else says. And maybe that's true. I've watched a few of these videos. That's why I'm making this. And those all generally rely on the same ideas of like list more, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I hope in my video I can talk about some of the same stuff, but explain how it's more than just list more stuff uh, if you want to get daily eBay sales. I've been selling on eBay for quite a long time, like 15 years now. Uh, there have been times when it's all of my income, times when it's none of my income. Right now I'm making about two to $3,000 a month on eBay, uh, and it's part of my attempt to build out 100 different revenue streams. I've, I've done a lot of stuff to make money online. I've, I've sold things every which way you can imagine. And my issue is I get bored quickly with things. And so what I do is I find the low hanging fruit, make that into a system of some sort, and then move on. Uh, and so these five tips, hacks, strategies, practices, habits, uh, what more ways can I put this to, to alert, you know, the YouTube robots that, uh, that I'm trying to target you as a viewer. Uh, these are five ways that I have uh, have been able to make daily sales, and I only work between like five and ten hours a week. Usually on Monday, most of that's on Monday, shipping up the weekend's orders. So here's uh, here's how I do that without further ado. Uh, by the way, my name is Blake. I'm sure a lot of you know me. If you're new here, I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, because my channel, I think, is one of the better ones that gives you like real, actual advice about how to make money in real, substantial ways. Not just like, here's how you drop ship. Uh, you know, here's how you copy and paste affiliate links in YouTube comment spam. Because that's like 95% of how to get rich, is, which is the, the most annoying name for it. But that's that's really, unfortunately, the reality of most of the audience here. So I know I'm sure I offended a lot of you, but for those of you who are actually trying to learn how to make more money, I think this video is going to help. Uh, the first hack, habit, tip that I talk about that I, I think is important is you want to make sure that you are engaged, you know, five days a week with eBay. So you know how on Amazon you have 24 hours to, um, to respond to a message or else you get some sort of imaginary demerit that could end up ruining your life and ending your business. So they don't have that same rule on, on eBay. You don't have to respond to messages, and I don't oftentimes. But what I do is I make sure that I'm engaging with the platform from the seller side in some way every single day. Maybe that's listing every day. Maybe that's shipping orders. Maybe that's leaving feedback. Maybe that's ending listings, then doing sell similar at a higher price or lower price or different keywords. You know, it's not really so like, oh, here's my schedule. I do this every single day. I just have gotten into a habit and a routine where every day, you know, minus a few weekends, I'm going to be tinkering with the back end. Just, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Nothing huge or crazy, but building up a sustainable business the way you would feed a hog before the slaughter. Uh, that's kind of my strategy. You can go quality or quantity, right? And I have, uh, I tend to go quantity over quality. Not that my listings aren't good, but just I'd rather have 10,000 sports cards listed making, you know, a hundred bucks a day than traveling around trying to get PS5s and, and all that fancy stuff, which is still fine to do. And on occasion, I do do that but I just don't, I don't like to feel like I'm beholden to the ebbs and, and, and flows of, uh, of supply chains. So that's my first tip is be engaged on the back end on eBay. Listing, shipping, feedback, ending, and, and, and sell similar. As, as a note, relisting doesn't appear to have the same sort of impact. Uh, and, and selling new and creating new listings has the best impact. But I've noticed that all those things, like for example, if I list 10 things and ship 10 things and leave 10 feedback, uh, I'll generally get more impressions on my listings than I will if I just list more stuff. So good to know. The second thing that I think there's a lot of misinformation about and a lot of opinions that aren't necessarily indicative of what's best for everyone is when it comes to promoted listings. I promote every single listing using the percentage of sale CPA, which stands for cost per acquisition 
formula. Uh, eBay has recently introduced advanced promoted listings, which is CPM, meaning cost per mill, meaning for every 1,000 uh, impressions or views, I forget which, you pay a certain price. I'm assuming it's views. That'd be crazy for impressions, but who knows? Uh, I have experimented with that. No money at all. I don't like it. I think it makes sense for quantity listings, like private label or wholesale stuff. But for what I do, where it's you know one or two of each item, maybe six, maybe ten in a very rare instance, it's just too cost prohibitive. What I do like though is the you know pay a cut of your listing to eBay for them to promote your listing. And I, I, I use this two ways. So I, d I d divvy up my, in my mind, is it a long tail listing or a short tail listing? And that's not totally accurate because depending on how someone searches for something, every listing could be long tail or short tail. But basically I'll give you two examples. Here's a long tail listing. Uh, Stones of Anarchy, 1980s, heavy metal, rare, paper thin t-shirt. Uh, and there's only five you know, listings up every year, right? Very rare. The buyers really want it. So they're looking for these unique keywords that don't often get researched. That's not totally long tail versus short tail, but to create this dichotomy, I'm using those terms. Short tail would be like sterling silver jewelry, which I sell a lot of as well. So when I'm bidding to get buyers, basically, on short tail listings, so when I'm selling jewelry or whatever it is, where I have lots of keywords that are generic and often searched, I'm paying more percentage-wise than these suggestion. I'll go a percent more because I want all of that traffic because it's a numbers game. When it's a long tail item, like the band I named, Stones of Anarchy, which I just made up, but that's the idea you're getting at. You know, esoteric band name, esoteric genre, yada, yada, yada. I'm bidding 1% to half a percent. Very, very low. I just want to be the top listing on these long term tail or long tail keyword term searches. Uh, if, does that, I hope that makes sense to you. When there's less competition, you can bid less. When there's more competition, you can bid more. Some people do no promoted listings. Someone, some people do 1% for everything. And obviously, uh, I think a lot of it gets lost in the conversation of whether it works or not. It's kind of hard to, on a, on a, a very long scale, have ever, a very large scale, have everyone keep good notes, basically. But that's what I've noticed. And I think if you begin to think of it that way, you will make more money or at least make more sales. This one kind of dovetails into my next tip, and that's have uh, a higher margin than you think you need. Most people say, what's the lowest, most recent sale? I'm going to undercut that. And uh, when items are uh, have a larger supply than demand, that always makes sense, right? But very few items are so cut and dry. What I do is I, I get a mental idea of what the average price is. I'm not adding them all up and dividing by the number. That would take too much work and take too much time. I'm saying, okay, we have a few sell for four, a few sell for two. I'll sell it for you know 380 or 360. Average plus about 40%. I'm not way up high, I'm not way down low, but I can be a reasonable price and still have room for promoted listings. Still have room uh, if I run a sale or a discount, for example, because those are two things that significantly boost sales. When I run a, a discount on all my inventory, I see like a 20% increase in sales. When I promote listings, I sell about 25% more than I would if nothing was listed. Now that's again, is it because people are seeing one promoted listing and going to others? I don't know. You know that, that's not. That's kind of beyond the uh, the sophistication that eBay gives you in terms of tracking. But I just know there's more money uh, comes when I when I when I promote things, and they, they do break down promoted inventory uh, revenue versus non promoted revenue. Um, but I, I do think that it's a bit more complex than that. What it comes down to is you want to utilize any advantage you get. And running a discount or running a promotion is an advantage, but not one that has to cost you money uh, because it's more the psychological factor of, oh, this is a good deal, than someone actually looking at all the prices and doing the math and finding the best deal. You know, whenever I say that kind of stuff, I'm always worried that someone's going to go, well, I do that. And like, that's that's them commenting. And like, listen, I get it. But what, what aggravates me a lot ab about people on the internet, especially, is they are so anecdotal 
in their understanding. They say, I'm this way, everyone must be this way. And they don't understand the diversity of, of consumer behavior. Something I also find interesting in our next number on the list is people always ask me in their live streams, and maybe we'll get back to those, maybe not, I don't know. Ironically, they're bad for the channel, at least weekly ones are. People always ask me, uh, when should I take down listings as if they ever should take down listings, right? What you should do is pay for an eBay store and just keep building up your listing count until you've got 10,000, 15,000, a million listings. There's no, you can't have too many listings if you have an inventory system that can uh, allow you to retrieve the things you sell. And that really is as simple as just like an alphanumeric system. So you have your million shelves and you have a a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 etc 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 and you use that to create a spreadsheet where all your inventory exists so as long as you can keep track of how much you have there's no upper limit to how many things you should have and the more listings you have the higher likelihood that any one of those things sells and beyond that, that someone goes to other things you have for sale and buys multiple items. I run uh, sales all the time where if you buy a certain amount of sports cards, you get a larger discount. And that encourages people to go from one listing to other ones, uh, making me more money. The next thing and the final thing, this is I think like a real hack that a lot of people can utilize to make more money. And that's have a list list. What's a list list? It's a list of things that are easy to list. So for me, that's sports cards and trading cards. It can be books, it can be paper ephemera, it can be anything where it's just photo, maybe a photo of the back, and then a title. It should take you, you know, two to three minutes per listing for these easy to list items and have those either saved as drafts or just at your disposal on your desk, for example, to take a photo of, because having that allows for that routine engagement to be a lot easier. If you're trying to take pictures of large items, it can be overwhelming, it can seem like too much work. Uh, it just gets in the way of consistent listing uh, unless you are very motivated. For the rest of us who are not like full-time 90 hour a week eBay people, we're trying to find, like I said earlier, the low hanging fruit. And sometimes that's just buying a blaster box of sports cards and then listing five a day when you're not listing what you typically list. If you typically list sports cards, you know this already, it's pretty easy to do, but just like having that kind of um, safety measure to ensure you can maintain that consistency will help you enormously. My name is Blake. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment below with any tips that you have or any things you think I said wrong. Uh, and I'll see you guys later talking about other interesting ways to make money on the internet and in real life for that matter. See you later.